So welcome everyone. Um, it's Friday finally, and we are finally on chapter two of the book, which means that we can start talking about uh, calculus. So what? So let's let's go. <clears throat> So, um, so what are we going to talk about? Uh, we're going to talk about limits. So, uh, so um, before I talk about limits, I'm going to give some examples um, to to see why we even. I mean, a limit is something about what happens to a function when the values approach a point, what does it mean to approach. Um, I'm going to talk first about why um, why we would even want to talk about this with examples. Sort of the examples I was talking about in the first day of class, um, I guess, this is 2.1. Um, So, I'm going to start with a very hard question, but hopefully you can give me a reasonable answer, or several. What is a tangent line? So, um, I think, so, I think we know the answer. Um, I think we know what what we mean by a tangent line. If you believe that these are circles, at some point in your life, you've learned that these lines are not tangents. And these lines are tangent to this circle. And of course, it doesn't have to be a circle. Any sort of curve could have tangents. And I think, so, so, I believe we all have an intuitive understanding of what a tangent line is. The, the question is, um, can we can we express that intuitive meaning in words? Can you express that intuitive meaning in words? Um, how do you how would you tell someone who doesn't know uh, what a tangent line is? Cool, it's an answer already. It's a line that touches a curve but does not intersect it. Okay, so I agree with you. But I hope we can do better because um, I wanna. I wanna I know. That just means yeah. the line at one point. Uh, Miles, you said uh, a line that only touches the um, the curve at one point. Well, that was somebody else. That wasn't me. Let's we'll say like it's the like instant instantaneous slope. The of curve in this instantaneous slope okay so i'm gonna maybe i'm gonna record because these are all good answers um so i'm gonna write them down a line that touches a curve but does not intersect it uh So, um, someone said, um, Zachary said, the slope of a graph. So someone turned off, turned on his microphone and said, a, long, a line that only crosses the curve or intersects the curve at one point. Um, and Mile 
else that it's the instantaneous look, I think. Okay, there were a lot of answers coming at once, so tell me if I got one of these wrong. Um, okay, so you're all more or less correct, but I have, you know, I'm, I have some issues. Um, with these two, I have the issue that I'm not sure what the words mean. I mean, you sort of move the problem of describing what tangent means to um, to explaining what slope is, which by the way, I mean the slope, we all, again, we all have an intuitive meaning of what it is, um, but I'm, I'm not sure, I think I would need to explain what the tangent line is in order to explain what the slope is because I only know what the slope of a line is. So if I knew what it meant to be tangent, I could tell you what it means to measure the slope of the tangent. So um, this one also kind of has, I mean, kind of has a similar problem because I don't know what, I don't, I don't know what I mean by touch. I mean, you could, why is, why is this touching, but this is not touching? Um, I think, I think there's something there uh, and I hope we get there. Um, so, uh, this last one is the one I like the most um, out, of, out of these options. It's because I know, basically because I understand all of these words, I know what points are, I know how to count how many points there are. For example, you know, these, this one, this line crosses the circle in two points and I'm saying it's not tangent. This one also crosses the circle in two points, I'm saying it's not, it's, it's not tangent. This one has zero crossings, um, and these two have only only one crossing. So this is something that is precise. Um, definitely, I mean, uh, definitely, it, it, there's just only one way to interpret it. Unlike you know, touching what exactly does that mean? And it seems to fit, um, unfortunately, it's not going to fit every time. But I mean, the whole point is that this is subtle. So take this line and take this point. So I think you will all agree with me that the tangent line um, at this point is going to look something like this. Um, and this line, I mean, I think this is the tangent. But there's a problem that you're probably seeing is that at least what I drew, um, in what I drew, the, the line intersects the curve at three points. And the thing is, no one is even saying that I drew the whole curve. Like, what if, what if you know, outside of outside of the window, who's who's to say that this curve is going to do something like this? It's both secant and tangent. Matthew, what does? Oh, my my line is secant and tangent. I mean, I agree, but. If we say that a tangent is a line that only intersects the curve at one point, um, it's we're, then if we say that, then we're saying it's not tangent. But I, so we, I mean, we have two options. If we're inventing, you know, we're inventing the concept of tangent here. So we could decree right now that there's no such thing that this this is not a tangent line, which would probably mean that this curve does not have a tangent at this point. We could say that um, the thing is, it's probably, we probably would like to say that this line is tangent. And if we want to say that this line is tangent, we should get a, a better definition. Although, I mean, to be fair, who said it? 
Oh, uh, it was a it was a person whose microphone turned on, and I didn't. I, I missed. It. Um, it is the, the reply I was expect. I was hoping you would give me. So, okay. So we we tried, and we were wrong, but not not by much. So let's try again. Does anyone have ideas for how to fix this? I'm gonna give you one idea, but it's spoilers. It's also not gonna work. Um, and more spoilers. I'm gonna keep asking you for ideas. So um, one thing. Let me do the picture again. One thing I could do. With what, so why am I saying that this is tangent? <clears throat> uh, why do we all think that this is tangent? The reason is that to know that something is tangent is um, I don't I could um, I could go delete everything outside of this circle and I could tell if everything if the curve is tangent. Um, So draw a small circle. 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 And say that uh, the line is tangent. <clears throat> Joshua has his microphone on. you were going to say something. Say that the line is tangent if it intersects uh, the curve at only one point within the circle and ignoring uh, what happens outside. So what I'm saying is um, take this curve and basically do this you get your face very close to the paper or the screen and you look at this and you don't give a shit what happens outside because here it looks tangent uh, or you know literally zoom in uh, looks tangent that's all I care about <clears throat> and I don't I don't care if if the curve outside is intersecting a bunch of times because it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. Um, so can anyone see a problem with this or is this just correct and then we're done for the day? This is a, this is a very hard question. I'm gonna be impressed if, if you give me if you can think of what's wrong with this. I mean, isn't it technically touching three points? I mean, it is, but if I tell you to ignore the other two because they're far away, then um, it's not, I mean, it is, it's touching three. It could be touching a bunch of more. I didn't finish drawing the curve, right? The thing is, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm saying, I'm saying, ignore that. Just look at a small circle and, you know, make the circle as small as you need. Oh, yeah, I should write that. Oh, 
what do you mean take the diameter uh, of the circle? I mean, I mean, I mean, you choose the diameter. That is a pretty good calculus model. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. It's going to be, I think it's better if the computer draws it because um, you're not going to believe what I'm drawing. <clears throat> it's going to, I mean, so here's the curve. Um, So, I mean, it doesn't matter what the formula is. Um, I just want to, I just want to have a nice picture. So, mm, does this look good enough? No, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> um, Okay. So, all over now. <clears throat> so, what's happening here? Um, right. I like the look of this one. So, I. Maybe you'll you'll say that this doesn't have a tangent. Honestly, that's a fair answer. So the question is, um, what's happening? So this is a very nasty curve uh, I drew. Um, it, I mean, it just it has a lot of waves, and it has more and more waves, and it has infinitely many waves before it reaches zero. The thing is, those waves are getting smaller and smaller. So I can, it, it still looks like a curve. It doesn't, the thing is you could actually draw this because at some point the waves get so tiny that it doesn't matter anymore what, uh, whether you draw them or not. So the question is, is, the, is this line tangent to, to, to the curve? And I think, I mean, probably a perfectly valid answer would be to say no, but I kind of want to say yes. Because the thing is, so first of all, this is not according to what I just said of drawing a small circle. Yeah. Drawing a small circle and looking at how many times it crosses, this doesn't work because this crosses here and here and here and here and here and here. And it keeps going and going, and no matter how small I draw the freaking circle, there's going to be infinitely many crossings in there. So that's really bad. Uh, um, so this is not tangent according to what I just wrote. Um, but on the other hand, it feels like this should be tangent because this red curve is really not that different from, say, I mean, from this one. So sure, out here it looks. Um, out here it looks. I mean, it looks pretty different. But as I get closer and closer, the two curves get kind of indistinguishable, and also indistinguishable from the line. So if I look now. <laughs> Now that I'm zoomed in, now I'm starting to get more and more convinced that the horizontal line should be tangent. When we need a set domain to ignore the rest of the points. Uh, well, my proposal right now is to that we get to choose our own set domain. We get to choose our own adventure. We get to make the circle as small as we want. Uh, but even giving myself all the choice in the world, I can't avoid the the waves crossing the, the horizontal line. So, so what's the conclusion here? Uh, well, again, we have two options. We can say that this is not tangent. That would, that's pretty valid, actually. Um, but I want to say that it's tangent 
because I think if two curves look very much alike, they're tangents. I mean, if one has a tangent, the other one should. Um, and so if we decide that this has to be tangent, or even if we decide that it's not, it's clear that this definition I gave is kind of subtle and complicated. Maybe, I mean, you want to avoid making your concept subtle and complicated if you can, you know, if they don't have to be. And I think we all, we all started this class thinking that the concept of being tangent was not subtle and complicated, only to be slapped in the face with not reality math. Um, so I don't like the definition I just wrote. Um, so makes me want to um, change my mind to maybe something easier, like trying to go back to what we meant by touching but not intersecting, because I know, I, I know what you meant, but I want you to say it. Um, by you, I mean any of you. So, um, so many devices. Uh, what else can we do? Are we out of ideas? There's 28 of you, hopefully. So here's a tangent. And here's some lines that are not tangent. What is what is different about the, the blue line if it's not the number of intersection points? When you finally reach your limit. I don't know if you're talking about your patience or some sort of math limit. Both. Okay, if you're talking about the math limit, I think I need to elaborate because I didn't understand. If you're talking about the patience, I totally understand. It's but it's Friday, it's almost over. We'll make it through. The non tangent lines actually cross the cross over the curve. I think you mean, I mean, I agree. I think you mean they cross from one side to another. So, so this is another fantastic guess that is ultimately going to be wrong, but it's a fantastic guess um, that you should be making. Uh, a tangent line touches the curve, but it uh, based on one side of the curve. So, um, is this what we want? Um, is this what we want? So, um, that definitely, it definitely works over zero here. Definitely works with the circles I was drawing before. Um, canyon lines to a circle are entirely contained outside. Well, non-tangent lines, I mean, either they don't touch the circle or they are, part of them is inside, part of them is outside. Uh, so, does anyone object to this? I have an idea. No, oh, Aaron, tell me. I think the slope of the tangent line is the same as the slope of the curve at the point it touches. You're right. But what is? But then I have to ask you what the slope is. Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's that's the problem. That's what we're. That's what I'm trying to get at. I mean, you're on the right track, but we need to somehow make sense of what the slope is. So while we don't know what the slope is, let's run with this and see what see what we get. Um, so. Um, so here's the problem. Let's just draw the same curve again. So if I choose a point here, there's, there's only one line going through, uh, going through this point that stays on one side. This is all great. Um, the problem, uh, and also here, you know, here, uh, 
the lengths I just drew are above the curve. The, uh, this line is below, but it's entirely below, so we're happy. The problem, oh, I, I love slide, sorry. So here's some lines, uh, some tangent lines that definitely agree with what, uh, with the definition we just wrote. So they're entirely above. Here's some lines, here's a line that is entirely below. And if some, some things are above and some things are below, rate of change. Well, that's the same, that's, I have the same question as the slope. If you say the rate of change, then I have to ask you what is the rate of change? Which, I mean, I'm going to answer myself in, in five minutes. So here there's tangents that are above, here there's, tan there's tangents that are below. And if I'm starting above and I'm ending below, in the middle something bad must have happened. So there's a point here um, where there's a tangent that probably crosses, I mean, ugh, it's hard to draw. Let me, let, let just tell the computer to draw it. The simplest function that has this problem is um, um, is y equals x cubed. Um, so if I go if I go like this, so. This is, I mean, I know what the tangent line is because I just wrote its equation. Uh, so these these lines are all tangents according to our definition. They're perfectly fine here. They're above the curve. On the positive numbers, they're below. Uh, there's a huge problem at x equals zero. At x equals zero, I am very sure that the tangent line has to be horizontal. But it's just, it's one half is on, is on one side and one half is on the other. And this messes up um, the last bullet that I had. Um, there's just no way around this. This has got to be tangent. And, and it's on both sides. Um, so this part of the curve, oh, no, I was saying, oh. This part of the line is below the curve. This part is above. That's going against what I said a tangent was. Um, so I got nothing. So um, I mean, the same thing, that's the thing I was trying to draw in this picture, except I failed probably. Let me try again. Maybe now that it's on the computer, I'm more inspired. So this should be tangent. I mean, even if I didn't draw the tangent exactly, hopefully you can imagine what it looks like and you can imagine that it's actually on both sides. So, okay, so this didn't work. Derivatives are rate of change. Well, that's what we're trying to, that's what the whole course is about, derivatives. So, so what do we do? Um, so here's what we do. Um, given, I mean, given that we had a lot of things that failed, let me show you the thing that we know works. Um, so, 
so this is the definition that works. Um, the thing that actually agrees with what we think a tangent should be. So um, take uh, take a curve. I'm saying I'm looking for the tangent at this point. So what you want to do is take another point, take another point of the curve, and then draw the the line. The draw the the secant line. Secant means line that crosses over. This is definitely not the tangent. Um, but the thing is, if I draw another point that's closer to my original point, and then another one, I can see I can see a pattern. The pattern is that these lines are approaching something. Uh, what they are approaching is the tangent line. So this is what I'm going to say the tangent line is. So let me write that down. The tangent line is found as follows. Um, take secant, uh, secant lines to your starting point and a second point and make the second point very close uh, to, to the original point. Um, then the secant lines approach uh, the tangent line. And this is what the tangent line is. It's whatever the secant lines are approaching. And the slope of the tangent line is whatever the slope of the tangent lines is getting is approaching. Um, so this is, I mean, this is what this works. This is tried and true. Um, but now the problems that we have is that I use some words that are not clear, uh, like this one and this one basically these are these are the important words here so what does it mean to, what does it mean to for a line to approach another what is very close like is there you know is it one millimeter or like i don't know a teaspoon if you're using imperial units is it like the size of an atom is it somewhere in between is it is it a foot what, what is close? Does it depend on your circumstance? Does it depend on the day of the week? So what is very close or is it something like infinitely close? Uh, what does it, if I, if I, if that's what I mean, if I'm trying to say infinitely close, what is infinitely close? And what does it mean for a line to approach another or what does it mean for the slope to approach, for a number to approach another number? So, uh, I mean, calculus is how we answer those questions. Um, um, the, so this is called the limit. So this is one example of why we want to study limits. We want to, I mean, the answer is to do derivatives. And a derivative, um, as you will see, is the, the slope of the tangent line, which is all that matters because if you have the slope, you know the line. Um, and and the, whole point of, the whole point of having a limit is to be able to do a derivative. I mean, not the whole point, but biggest part of it. Um, so, so that's one reason that um, we try really hard to, um, you know, we try really hard to define a tangent and hopefully I convince you that this is the most reasonable way because all the others have either problems or they're more complicated than we think or, or they're not 
very precise. Um, we like precision because it helps us communicate. Okay, so uh, next example. This is the example I asked you on the first day of class. Um, what is velocity? And I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe you took calculus before, maybe it seems, this seems like the same question to you, but in principle, it's a very different question. Um, one has to do with moving um, and time, and the other has nothing to do with moving or time. It has to do with shapes. Um, so, what is the, um, So, um, if a car says 60 miles per hour, but it has only been driving for 30 seconds, what does this mean? So, you, I mean, you already have some answers. Um, Uh, the first day of class. The thing is, a car, if I go right now, I start a car and I start driving it and I go on the highway, it says the, the speed meter is going to say 60 miles an hour, but that doesn't mean, you know, it could have been five minutes. That doesn't mean I've driven 60 miles in an hour. Um, it's just, I mean, I haven't been driving in an hour. So what is, what is below? Oh, shit. I didn't, wait, oh yeah, I did. I'm showing the right side. Forget what I'm showing in the, in the Zoom meeting. Um, so, again, I think that is something that you intuitively know it is the meaning of, um, but can you explain that to me? It is your speed at that moment in time. Right, exactly. And what is, what what does that mean? How can you have speed at, at, at a moment? In that 30 seconds of driving, you're going to speed of 60 miles an hour. I mean, that is that is not true because I started the car, I was driving slowly until I uh, went to the highway and uh, I got on the highway and, and I accelerated to 60 miles an hour. And maybe it was the first time the, the speedometer ever said 60 miles an hour before I was going at 10 when I was driving through a parking lot, you know? So, um, it's not, the speed of those 30 seconds is just the speed. It's somehow, it's the speed of that moment. So then what does that mean? What is the speed of that moment? So I have an idea. Yeah. So if you graph the curve of your speed, like the whole time you're driving, the at that moment, the tangent line would show 60 miles an hour. Like the slope of the line would be 60. Okay. Um, I mean, you're right, but I don't know why you're right. So you're saying if you if you graph time against distance, somehow it looks like this. And this, uh, at this point, we have slope 60. <sighs> so, I mean, that's true, but I don't, I, I don't know why right now. I 
feel like I should be able to explain it without graphing, you know. I don't think you understand speed um, intuitively by drawing a graph. Like, you know, even even if they're not moving, you have a turtle and you have a, a hare. And this one has longer speed lines. And you, you look at this picture and you know that the hare is moving faster. And that is not because in your brain, you're drawing a graph of the distance traveled over time and you're computing the slope. That is it's something else that you're doing. What do you mean mean value theorem? We, we, I don't know what that is. I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if your previous calculus knowledge is going to help you. Okay, so, um, yeah, it's almost a weekend, so I'm going to have to spoil it for you. So, so, what is average speed, first of all? Because that is something that we know perfectly well. Um, so if you take some interval of time, like a minute, uh, you know perfectly well what the speed is in that situation. Um, well, it is, where are you scrolling? It is the distance traveled divided by the time uh, that has uh, passed. You know what the, you know what the speed is. Um, the more distance you travel in the same time, the the faster you're going. Um, low light k indeed and the the shorter the time you take to travel the same distance the the faster you're going if you take half the time you must be going past a, past um uh twice as fast so the instantaneous speed so what is the card telling you it's not saying that you drove an hour because you didn't it's not saying that it measure your speed over a minute. It's really, I mean, it's not telling you. Uh, but it is the, you all know too much calculus. Talking about derivatives. So, What you what the car is saying is that it's it's telling you how much you traveled in a very uh, small amount of time. Maybe I have no idea how long how how a car measures speed of the turning wheels, but probably if it went a hundredth of a second, you wouldn't notice that it's you know not accurate. Um, very small uh, amount of time. So, um, so what it's computing, what the car is telling you, is telling you your average speed. Um, so it's, um, I mean, sorry, it's, it's kind of lying to you. So the instantaneous speed um, is very close to what your average speed was in the last second, because in the last second, your speed is not gonna change very much. And if it changes from 59 miles per hour to 60, you're not gonna tell by looking at the speedometer. Um, um, or maybe if, a, if one second is too big for you to tell, then make it a 10th of a second. So it takes a 10th of a second. And if you travel, um, If in, in one tenth of a second, I have no idea how long a car travels in a tenth of a second, then you travel 10 meters. No way. Oh, yeah, maybe. 
10 meters, then it would tell you that your speed is 100 meters per second. And again, we have this thing where as the, as, as the amount of time we measure over, it gets smaller and smaller, we approach this notion that we know what it is. It, it, it's the instantaneous velocity. Um, let me write that down as we measure average uh, speed over a uh, very small, um, uh, very small amount of time we approach um, the instantaneous speed. So you might see a pattern here. I mean, maybe you know that uh, I'm computing the, the growth of the derivative, which is not what calculus is about. But the pattern I'm trying to do here, I'm saying look at a very small amount of time and look at what things approach. Um, and if we go back to tangent lines, I was talking about things that are very close, so the distance is very small, and what happens to something, some function approaches something else, and then that something else is what I'm trying to compute. So, um, in both cases, the answer is, um, the answer is a limit. I didn't so are there any questions okay so on monday we'll talk about what a limit actually is um now that we now we know why we want to talk about limits which is to be able to uh, talk about speed and if you can talk about speed you can talk about rate of change uh, it doesn't then it's not doesn't have to be about physics it could be the speed at which a price is changing um, or, you know it could be uh, basically this can be applied anywhere um, the speed at which um, the megabytes are going into your computer via the internet um, and well, now we know why we care. Uh, so for a while, we're gonna talk about limits for a couple of weeks, then we're gonna talk about derivatives. Uh, so that's all I got. Um, I mean, not all I got, it's all I got time for. Um, welcome to calculus. <laughs>